Hello, and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. This morning we find out if it's true that it is too early to talk about camera projection matrices. So, um, before we do that though, uh, I just wanted to give a little shout out. Um, remember, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash cookingwithunity, and if you do, you get access to the Cooking with Unity Super Repo, which is on GitHub. And if you have access to that, uh, I added some, something on there uh, last night. I was playing around with some uh, special effects. And this just has a bunch of different little particle effects kind of inspired by Guilty Gear when I was playing playing around with it. So we've got this like nice little like hit effect thing, and we've got... Most of these require Pro for full effect. Let me just show you what it looks like without Pro real quick. So this one doesn't look as good without the bloom, but it's still, still a decent particle effect. Um, and I've got a couple other examples like uh, this shield here, which... Also is using Bloom for effect, but I also have been working on a basic version of it that works on Unity Basic and still kind of blooms a little bit. Have to get creative with this stuff just because there's not not as many options on Basic for uh, for uh, blending and going outside the pixel borders. So anyway, just wanted to point that one out in case you guys were interested. Um, so uh, remember to get access to that. Donate to uh, uh, Cooking with Unity on Patreon. So. Let's actually open up Breakfast with Unity now. And uh, what we're doing today is we're going to be changing the view frustrum uh, geometry a little bit. Um, it's, geometry is not exactly, well, I guess it is the right word, but it's not uh, It's not like we're changing a mesh or a model. It's kind of like a mesh, but we're going to be basically changing the, uh, the projection, which is used to calculate the um, view volume. So um, why would you want to do this? Well, um, what are we calling this? Hold on. Using oblique frustrum. I'll just call it oblique frustrum. Um, why would you want to do this? Well, actually, there was a question on um, Reddit this morning, and this is what actually inspired this this uh, this talk. Um, someone wanted to draw half the field of view, and they wanted to make it so that there was four cameras that actually... Oh, he already found it. Oh, he's still having trouble finding it. Perfect. So, yeah, that makes it easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up two cameras to render split screen, but instead of rendering like a sphere in the center of each one, we're going to render one sphere, one half on one side, one half on the other, using an oblique frustrum. Um, so let's go ahead and start with what we already have here. We have a split screen overlay. We have a split screen example here. And let's not, let's start fresh. Let's start fresh. So file, new scene. We're going to save the scene. We're going to call it oblique frustrum and I'm I'll be surprised if frustrum gets spelled right every time on this episode so we got this new oblique frustrum unity level yay so let's first create our second camera um, and do a basic split screen let's create a uh, 3d object sphere and let's duplicate this camera we're gonna call it um, what are we gonna call it main camera uh, I'm gonna call it right camera and I'm going to call this one left camera. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll keep one of them tagged as main camera. We're not going to be using the tag anyway. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to lift this little gem of code here from, um, from the Unity documentation. And you can see what it's doing here is you can basically adjust. You can do this left or right or up or down or both. Um, you, you're basically like skewing the view volume. So it changes the way that perspective works at the edges of the view volume. So um, what we're going to be doing here to split a sphere between two uh, cameras is to basically just set this thing to go along the the center of the screen on the bottom edge or on the left edge on one and then on the right edge on the other. I'm going to do it vertically split but you could do it either way and actually maybe we'll even do quarters just just to show how to do that. So um, let's bring both the cameras a little bit closer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to, just for ease of use, I'm going to put both cameras on top of each other so that you know that they're in the same place. And uh, I'm just going to bring this down to zero, and we're going to bring both of them into two way or something. And uh, let's move our sphere down into zero, zero land. And so right now we have... A, two cameras they're rendering the same thing which is the sphere but they're rendering it on top of each other so you can't see that so first let's create a directional light real quick so we can see the sphere better 
And now let's make it so that these are actually split using the technique that we did way back when on split screen overlay. So all we're going to do is we're going to change the viewport rect on the left camera to be um, width of 0 0.5. There we go. Now we have the left camera. And then we go to the right camera and this one we set the X to 0 0.5. So now we have a standard split screen. Both of these cameras are rendering the same object. You can see that the cameras are in the same position, so that makes sense that they would both render exactly the same. And because we're we're setting the uh, the viewport rect differently, we're getting different results as to well, I mean, we're getting a left side and a right side now. So now we need to actually make it so that these converge on each other. Now you could you could try and tweak the cameras and kind of move them out and try and find the view frustrum that's between them, but it'll change if your aspect ratio changes. There's all sorts of bad things that can happen. So we're going to use the set obliqueness feature and we're going to write a little script around it. So we're going to create a uh, new C sharp script. We're going to call this um, set camera um, set oblique frustrum. And we're going to open this up. I'm going to say oblique fr frustrum as much as I can because they're fun, big words. So um, what we're going to use is we're going to use this little function here. Now this function is a uh, is not in C-sharp, as you can probably tell. I'm going to very quickly convert this to C-sharp from JavaScript. So we're going to change this to void. We're going to reverse the order of the declarations. So float, horse, obl, and get rid of all these extra little doohickeys that we don't need in there. All right, so float, horse, oblique, vertical, oblique. Um, we need a matrix 4x4 four four mat. Um, and this should do it. So let's see if this compiles first. Save, console, looking good, we compiled, all right. Now let's see if it actually works. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set it once and start. Uh, we're gonna do, and we're gonna expose the horizontal and vertical oblique options here. So public, float, horizontal, oblique. Um, public, float, vertical oblique and what we're going to set them to is um, whatever we so I'm going to default these to equals zero point I don't know what good defaults are for these actually I'm going to try 0 0.5 on each I think that should make it so that there's no difference in what we normally see but we'll find out so Horizontal oblique is 0 0.5, vertical oblique 0 0.5, and these are going to be tweak values anyway, so we can experiment. And all we do is set obliqueness with these values. So we're just going to pass in horizontal oblique and vertical oblique. So, oh, unexpected symbol. Oh, didn't have a semicolon. Save. So now if we hit now if we put this on each of our cameras, left camera and right camera, let's see how it looks when we hit play. Okay. So 0.5 was not exactly appropriate, but you can see that it has changed the way that um that it's rendering a little bit. So let's let's play with these values and get what we need. Also, let's clear one of the audio listeners so that we don't have to deal with that crap anymore. Uh, I'm going to get rid of uh, set oblique. No, I'm going to get rid of the audio listener on the right camera. And we're going to hit play. Oh, and this will not work for tweak values yet. So we're going to really quickly add a public bool uh, set every frame equals false. And we're going to just copy this. Call it update and quickly add a if set every frame, then we set the obliqueness. This will allow us to basically fine tune this in real time and then you can turn it off and you won't be changing the uh, view for us from every frame. So um, set every frame, we're going to turn these on for right now. 
and we're going to play with them. This is the best way to learn, right? To play. So if we wanted this thing to be um, split right down the middle, it looks like we're going to need negative one, and we're going to need probably positive one and a zero. There we go. So um, so one zero and negative one zero. So I'm just going to do that one zero negative one. and zero and so when we hit play we now have two cameras rendering split we can adjust the x like well, that's not the rotation that's the scale we can adjust the x rotation and we can like split the object in half it's not actually splitting it in half obviously because it's, it's going to clone when we when we rotate to the right but um there there are definitely effects that you might need with this sometimes you want to get closer to the ground like if you're making a racing game and you want a bumper cam you you want to get closer to the cam the ground on the frustrum and adjusting this to be a little bit more oblique can sometimes get that angle that you want um, keep, keep this in mind as an option if you need to, because, and even think about it as a, a special effects type of thing. You could, uh, change, you could slowly change these values to adjust the perspective in certain cases and use it for like bridging between two, two camera angles or something. So, um, so yeah, so, um, or you could make some game about splitting cubes or spheres somehow and like use this as a clever way of doing it. Um, that's probably not the best idea just because... As I said, it's not splitting them. You're still got the whole sphere, but um, but I'm sure you can find some cool things to do with this, and hopefully this will help at least one person out on the internet. That's why I like answering questions on the internet because I know at least one person will benefit from them. So um, anyway, thank you very much for joining. Um, if you have any uh, questions, please actually yes, this is enough. Yeah, this is enough. Um, oh, I want to do one more thing, just real quick, just for the purposes of um, knowing what's going on. If there's zero, zero, is that the normal? That's the normal. So let's set that as our defaults. Zero and zero. This way, if we use it in the future, it will start as a normal camera and then you can adjust things as you need. So save scene, save project. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. If you want, you can tweet me at drakfire, that's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Remember, donate to Cooking with Unity on Patreon.com. You get access to the Cooking with Unity Super Repo on um, GitHub, and that will allow you to see cool stuff that I'm working on that's just not on Breakfast with Unity or, or Cooking with Unity. So, thank you very much. You guys have a great one, and I will catch you tomorrow with another Breakfast with Unity bright and early 9 a.m. PDT, or whatever time that happens to be in your neck of the woods.